Today you're going to be completing activity 1.3.5, documenting a design. Now many of the things you're going to be doing today are just kind of uh, repeats of things you've done in the past, just kind of build your skills, specifically in creating drawings and creating dimension, dimensions within those drawings. Um, but also we are going to look at creating detailed views, so you can see on this front view of this crank arm part here. Um, we're going to be zooming in on this specific section of it, which is the detail view you see above that's scaled up so that we can more easily dimension that and show some of the detail in the drawing. To get started with this, you're going to need to go up into your canvas assignment and click on the crank arm part and download it. Uh, you can see down here that I've already downloaded mine. And then once you've done that, you'll want to go over to Fusion, go to your PLTW folder, to your IED folder within that, down to um, 1.3.5 you'll need to create this folder and then once you've created that folder go into it and then you'll want to upload your crank arm part using the upload button here and then finding the part most likely in your downloads and getting that uploaded I've done, I've done that already to save us a little bit of time so I'm gonna go ahead and open that part and once I have that part open I want to go ahead and create a drawing from it so I'm gonna go under bodies in my browser click on body one click on design and go to drawing and from design. Now you'll notice that uh, the units are defaulted to millimeters so we're going to change that to inches and then we also want to change the standard to ASME and then we actually do want this B size sheet which is 17 inches wide by 11 inches tall so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm, while that's loading I'm going to go ahead and pull up the drawing um, and we'll I'm kind of zoomed out here I know it's hard to read we'll zoom into things as we need them. Um, but we're essentially going to go ahead and create a front view of this part and the right side view and then we're going to create a detailed view of that part um, so that we can add all of our dimensions. So we'll create all the views and then we'll come back and add all of our dimensions. So um, if you notice um, it says front view here but I'm actually looking at what I would consider the top view. So we could go back to the fusion drawing and actually change the views. The easier way for now is just to change our orientation from front to top and that gives us the view that we want and then we want to change this from a half scale to two to one scale and I'm gonna go ahead and place that view and then I'm gonna hit OK now that I've placed that view go ahead and click on it click projected and then I'm gonna project over this right side view right click and hit OK. Now if I go back to my drawing itself you can see my scale is a little off here this part is a little too big so I can go back and fix that so I'm gonna minimize that I'm gonna double click on that view and instead of two to one scale let's try a one to one scale and see what that looks like and hit close so now if I look at these two my front and my right view and then I go back to my drawing here um, that's a more appropriate size for uh, to match the scale on here. Now what you'll see on the bottom right hand corner of your drawing is that we have a scale that says 4 to 1 and that's because the detail view that we're going to be making has a 4 to 1 scale so your actual part doesn't have a 4 to 1 we're going to use a um, 2 to 1 in this case um, but we're going to go back and add a detail view in to the drawing. So to do that um, Pull that drawing back up. Um, I'm going to create a detail view of what is encompassed by this uh, circle or these section lines that create the detail view in this detail view A. So to create that detailed view, all we need to do is go up to our drawing views, and I'm going to close my data panel here to give me a little more room, and click on detail view. When I do that, I'm actually going to cl click on this front view, zoom in a little bit, and I want to click on the center point of this second circle and that allows me to drag out this detail view. Now if I go down to my drawing I want to see about uh, how big I need that to be I want it to match so it looks like my circle kind of goes almost through the center of that fourth hole so I'll minimize that and then I'm going to drag this out until it goes through about the center of that uh, fourth hole from the right and go ahead and click and when I do that it's going to allow me to place that detail view so uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag that up here but notice it's not quite as big as I want it because I want it to be a 4 to 1 scale so I'm going to go over to my drawing view I'm going to change that from a 2 to 1 to a 4 to 1 which sizes that up 
and then I'm going to go ahead and get it relatively close to the top, but enough to room to leave me for dimensions. And I'm going to go ahead and place that view and then hit OK. Now it places that view, gives me my title for that uh, view, which is detail view A, and it gives me the scale, which is four to one. Um, and now I can go in and add all my dimensions that I need. So if I go back and look at my drawing, zoom out here a little bit, I have dimensions on this detail view I need to add. I have dimensions on the front view, and then I have an overall dimension on my right side view as well. So I'm not going to go through how to make all these because I know you can go through and do that. But one thing I do want to point out specifically are angle dimensions and then reminding you kind of how to edit your dimensions as well. Now what you'll notice is this part is very uniform. It's a pattern. A lot of the geometry is very similar throughout the part. So what you'll notice on a lot of these dimensions is TYP, meaning typical. So for example, this 0.17 diameter or inch diameter hole has TYP next to it because every single hole that is similar to this one in this part has the exact same diameter. So we don't need to go through and add a diameter dimension for every single one of those. We can just put TYP on there and it's understood that all of those holes that are that are similar are going to be the exact same diameter so we don't have to dimension every single one of them and same thing for the angle up here as well this 90 degree angle um, and then the angle on the other end of the detailed view but I do want to show you how to do the angle just as a reminder so if we go up to our dimension and click the drop down on dimensions we can do a smart dimension and it should automatically select angular but if we want to make sure we're doing it correctly we can select on select angular dimension and then I'm just going to click in between those two lines that I want to measure the angle. So from there to there and drag that out. And I can go ahead and place that 90 degree angle there. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. Now I can go ahead and double click on that 90 degree angle. And I know some of you have had issues in Fusion where if you click in here and arrow over and hit TYP, for example, and hit enter, it doesn't actually put it in there it doesn't uh, solidify that in and actually write TYP there so the solution to that that I have found is if you highlight the whole thing and hit delete and you'll have to retype the dimension so 90 and then I can come over to my insert symbol here and get my degree symbol symbol space TYP and hit enter then that will uh, fix that issue if you're having trouble with just inserting text into an existing dimension. Um, that should have a space in it, so I'm going to double click back on that, click the cursor in between and put that space in there and hit enter. So there should be a space between your dimension and the TYP, and the TYP should be all capital. So now that you know how to do that, you can go back and look at the drawing, which is in Canvas, and you need to recreate all the dimensions that are given on this drawing. Um, and make sure that your scale and everything matches correctly. Once you have done that, um, you'll want to save this drawing. So I'll go ahead and hit the Save button. And I just want to call it Crank Arm Drawing, and it's going to save it in my 1.3.5 folder, which is great. And then once you have saved that, you're going to want to output that as a PDF and upload that PDF to Canvas as your submission for this assignment. Mm -hmm.